Hello, friends. Welcome to Emmanuel Cares, a podcast of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Shirley, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Dave Rudot. Today, our, we're building on our resurrection faith. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verses 3 to 9. We're talking about our, the Christian source for optimism for the future. Let's join the worshipers on April 16th, 2023. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, into an inheritance that is undying, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Through faith, you are being protected by God's power for the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Because of this, you rejoice very much, even though for now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various kinds of trials, so that the proven character of your faith, which is more valuable than gold, which passes away even though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, yet by believing in him, you are filled with a joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is God's word. I invite you to pray with me. Direct us now, gracious Lord, to hear or write your holy word. Assist your minister to preach and let the Holy Spirit teach and let eternal life be found by all who hear the gospel sound. Amen. In the name of our risen Lord Jesus, who gives us the reason to look forward, dear Christian friends, Are you naturally an optimistic person? My wife naturally is a very optimistic person. And that has been very beneficial to our relationship because my optimism tends to go up and down. There are times when I'm really excited, something really great going to happen. I remember I was a pastor in Pierre. I had been a pastor for a while. I had been pushing, let's do uh, canvassing in the neighborhood Supposedly, they had canvassed in the neighborhood before, so I was all optimistic. This is what we're going to do. And I was getting all ready, and everybody knew about it because I put it in the bulletin, right? Isn't that how it goes? You put it in the bulletin, and therefore everybody knows about it. And that Saturday came for us to do canvassing in the neighborhood, and not a single soul showed up except for my organist. But my organist was there to practice organs. She wasn't there to hand out pamphlets. And so you would see, you would think that naturally I'm not very optimistic about the next time that I said, hey, let's go do canvas the neighborhood, and so on and so forth. My optimism wanes and ebbs. But my wife's has always seemed to be the same. Like this week, I said to my wife, I don't think I can get a Bible class together for a youth group. She said, that's fine. We'll, we'll do a service project. I said, a service project? Yeah, they'll pick up all the sticks, which they did yesterday. They'll pick up all the sticks. And I said, What team is going to come here on a Saturday night and pick up sticks? Oh, that's okay. That we'll feed them. We'll give them some food. Yeah, but still, picking up sticks, you're you're asking them to to take care of their church property. Are they actually going to come to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just do it. Let's go ahead. And, of course, they were all here. And they picked up sticks, and they ate meals, and they stayed up way past their 9 o'clock time, enjoying each other's company. Are you naturally... Optimistic? Sometimes our optimism ebbs and flows, and sometimes it is always there. Sometimes our, opti- our optimism is affected because our expectations are unmet. Think of someone who is, I can think of somebody who is elderly, and they think, this is how my golden years are going to go, and, they're, and they don't go the way that they envisioned them to go, and things aren't going the way that they wanted. It seems like all the golden years are behind them, not in front of them, so it's hard for them to look forward. We could think of someone who is middle-aged, and I guess I'll let you figure out what middle-aged is, um, but if someone who's middle-aged and they're thinking, you know, when I was in my 20s, I had all of these expectations how my life was going to go, and now here I am, it just seems like I'm spinning my wheels. How, how is it that I have anything to look forward to? It's just always the same thing day after day. Work, work, work. Wheels are spinning. It's not going anywhere. 
Maybe if you're younger, you're, you're a teen, you're looking ahead to the rest of your life, but you also are burdened with the mistakes that you made in the present, and maybe you're thinking to yourself, it doesn't seem like the personality that I am actually fits in this world, and so you have nothing to look forward to in the rest of your life. And to all of that, Peter it has been waiting for us in First Peter. And Peter would be the unlikely person that you would think would be optimistic. Right? He's the one who said to Jesus, don't go to Jerusalem and suffer and die. And Jesus said, that, yeah, that's exactly where I'm supposed to go. Or Peter, who preaches, who was at one point during Holy Week, was brought down by a, a servant girl in the courtyard of the high priest saying, you also were with him. Now here, as we just read in Acts, he, he is not afraid to speak to the leaders of, of, his, of his people, the people that had conspired to put his rabbi to death. He is not afraid to call out their sin and to pronounce God's forgiveness. But yet then what happens after this? The church gets persecuted. And they're, they're scattered. Talk about expectations of, of a new, of, of, of God's people being surrounded by the apostles there in Jerusalem and there at the temple, and to think this is where the new church is going to grow, that now all of a sudden it's scattered abroad. You would think that that would cause Peter to not to be very optimistic. All of those expectations unmet throughout his life. But yet he is the very person who writes to us about optimism about the future. That we can look forward with hope about the future. And I just want to talk about two concepts that Peter uses to explain this optimism that Peter has and that you also have by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit writing to Peter through the power of the Holy Spirit working through the Word today. One of those concepts is an inheritance. And the other concept is a new birth. So first of all, the inheritance. Peter writes, Into an inheritance that is undying, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Through faith you are being protected by God's power for the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. An inheritance, something that is ours because Jesus rose from the dead. It's important for us to understand that the inheritance that we have, that Peter is talking about, is not something that we have by nature. It's not just because we're, we're breathing, we're sucking air, we're vertical and, and sucking air, as, um, as one of our members likes to say. That's not the reason why we're getting an inheritance. You and I were born into this world sinful. You and I have a sinful sinful nature. We have inclinations that are against God and against his will. This inheritance that is ours is ours by faith. God has made us his children through the working of his word, and in some cases through the working of his word and water in baptism, Right? For most of us who are baptized, but not all of us are baptized. The working of the word creates and strengthens faith in our hearts that makes us these children of God and heirs of salvation. This inheritance that is yours because Jesus rose from the dead is an inheritance that he says is undying, undefiled, and unfading. We think of if somebody leaves us money as an inheritance, that can be used up, doesn't last. If they, if they leave us China, that can break. And maybe sometimes the inheritance that we are given to us from those who have gone before is stuff that we would look at and say, well, I don't know what to do with this. I'm going to keep it because it belonged to them, but I have no use for it. And so we put it in our attics, we put it in our basements, we put it in the storage containers. It has no use for us. Peter tells us that our inheritance is undying, undefiled, unfading. Something that's not going to end, 
is something that can't be corrupted, something that can't ever fade. And of course, we're probably thinking, yeah, heaven, that's heaven. We have heaven because Jesus lived and died for us. That's a great inheritance. But that is not what Peter is talking about. It's more than heaven. Listen as he says, Through faith you are being protected by God's power for the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. What Peter is talking about is the inheritance that you have is this new heaven and a new earth that's coming at the end of all things. Even though we die, we go to heaven, our soul is is in bliss and and is happy, right? But that isn't the fulfillment of our salvation. The fulfillment of our salvation is the resurrection. When we will live on this earth that's no longer tainted by sin and will be with our brothers and sisters in Christ who have gone before us, our loved ones who have gone before us, and we will have bodies that will live forever. That's our inheritance. That's what you have to look forward to. So when every, every time when things aren't going very well and you have all of these unmet expectations, you have this inheritance that you can bank on, that undying, undefiled, unfading inheritance that you will one day walk on this earth in a resurrected body with your brothers and sisters in Christ with your loved ones who have died in the Lord and experience creation like it's never been experienced before. All the things that we love that being out as a part of this world that aren't sinful, we'll be able to enjoy in this new heaven and a new earth. If you like being outside, if you like animals, if you like being out in nature, if you like working the ground, All will be there, but without sin, so without weeds. The enjoyment of farming without weeds, the enjoyment of being outside in creation and enjoying all the birds and the the animals. Can we even grasp how awesome that's going to be? Plus, we're going to be with those we love that have gone before us. Isn't that something to look forward to? That's what Peter's looking forward to. That's what, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you and I can look forward to, too. So when, when we're filled with all kinds of unmet expectations, when, when life just seems to be like, it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better, we have this inheritance that's yours through faith in Jesus Christ. I mentioned that we were going to talk about a new birth. Another reason for us to look forward to the future and be optimistic. He says, by this great mercy, he gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. New birth. Oftentimes in church, when we talk about new birth, we're talking about our baptism. The day that we were born again, we're talking about when the day when uh, the Holy Spirit has created faith in our hearts. This is that new birth, right? But as we're weary and burdened, that new birth might seem like that was a long time ago, and it has long since faded, and it's not, I'm an old person now, I'm I, I can only, I'm the only one here that can say that. I'm the old person. I'm not going to say anybody of you guys are old, but just the, the mentality of a person who feels like they're weary, that they've been here a long time. New birth seems like a long time ago. But that's not what Peter is talking about. Peter is talking about the new birth that you and I experience every day as we remember our baptism, as we confess our sins and receive forgiveness, that's the new birth, that we start anew. God's mercies are new every morning. His forgiveness is new every morning. It doesn't grow old. It doesn't fade. It doesn't crack. It doesn't look at you and I and say, oh, them again? No, here's forgiveness for you again through Jesus and what he has done through his perfect life and death and resurrection on the cross. 
This is our new birth, even as Peter writes uh, in verse 6, because of this you rejoice very much, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various kinds of trials, so that the proven character of your faith, which is more valuable than gold, which passes away even though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Peter doesn't say to us, we have something to look forward to because our life here is going to get better. That's what we would wish he would say. But that isn't what he is saying. We have something to look forward to because, as I mentioned, we have an inheritance of the new heaven and new earth that is ours through Jesus and him alone and what he has done. But we also have something to look forward to because we have this new birth. On our sign in the front of uh, church today, maybe you saw it, with God all things are possible. I don't know if you know the history of that sign, but that was the sign that uh, St. Paul's in Greenleaf would have in the front of their church. And I like that sign because it sounds like it's one thing, but really it's another. Some people might look at that and see the rainbow colors and say, oh, wait a minute, is this a church that says that gay is okay? Is that what this is saying? And you would look at the sign and you have the colors there, but we're not going to let the one movement take away the beautiful pictures of the rainbow. And it isn't saying with God all things are permissible. It's saying with God all things are possible. So if someone were to come in here who is struggling with their desires of saying, I want to be a different gender than what I was created, we would say, welcome to to the club, not that we face those same problems and desires, but welcome to the club. We're a bunch of people who have desires within us that are sinful. Maybe we have sinful desires to gossip. Maybe we have sinful desires to lust. Maybe we have sinful desires to hate. Maybe we have sinful desires to be jealous, selfish, We all are dealing with desires that are not God-pleasing, but here we come for a new birth, for God to to confess our sins to him and receive in in his wonderful words of forgiveness new life, new strength to battle with our sinful self. With God, all things are possible. That's hope and optimism of a new birth that is ours through God's word and because of what Jesus did by rising from the dead. If you're not naturally optimistic, join the club. But God in his word reminds us that we have reasons to look forward, that we have reasons to look forward with optimism. One, because we have an inheritance And two, because here in this place, the church gathers to receive his word and sacrament so that we would again have a new birth. New life would be fused, funneled into us so that it would fight the desires and temptations of our own souls. There's a movie that I like. It's called 42. It's the story of Jackie Robinson and the Brooklyn Dodgers. And there's a quote that I like. Uh, I think the owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers says, uh, it's about opening day. So it's the beginning of the season. And he says, he loves opening day because there's all future, no past. Here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, all future, no past. The past sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ and what he has done. The future looks promising because of, the, of what God has promised us. The future looks promising because what God works in us, that new birth through the word and sacrament. Amen. Thanks for listening to Emmanuel Cares. For more information about how this country church can care for you, or how you can help us care for others, go to emmanuelshirley.com. 
The link is in the show notes. On the webpage, you can find out how uh, we can care for you under the Pastoral Care tab, where you'll see Bible Connections, where we'll have online or on-demand Bible classes, where we connect God's Word to your life. Also, another podcast called Casting Nets. you also find a tab under Get Involved, how you can be a part of this family, how you can be a part of God's family, God's family that cares for you and for others. Emmanuel means God with us. May he be with you today.